Now let's move on to the heavyweights. I'm sure everyone wants to know what the latest situation is. It seems every time uh, Eddie Hearn does an interview, each time the Fury Joshua fight seems to be closer, <laughs> certainly in his mind. Is that the case from your discussions with Fury and Bob Arum and so on? Well, at the moment, as I said, I've been out, been out of the loop a bit, but I'm back in it now. And uh, the situation is that uh, negotiations are going the right way and uh, hopefully we'll have a, some sort of something on paper that we can all look at and hopefully all agree. I just want to get the fight on. It's a fight, you know, I, I really fancy Tyson to win and we just want to get it on as soon as possible. And uh, there's, there's no resistance from Aaron. It's just making sure that everybody um, gets their contractual commitments agreed. And from what Bob said most recently, it's looking like, because it's a two-fight deal, as we've said before, it's looking like the first fight might be in the Middle East and hopefully the second fight back in the UK when fans are back. Well, we'll see what happens. But, you know, uh, wherever they are, you know, as long as the... As long as everybody's happy with the uh, the fighters are happy with the finances of it, and everybody's satisfied, just get it on because that's what the fight everybody wants to see. Wherever it takes place, let's just get it on. I think when it was first announced that you had the framework of this two fight deal and everyone really wanted it to happen, I think a lot of fans maybe felt it was too good to be true. But now it seems like we're actually on the verge of it coming together. Well, look, it's a fight that has to happen. You know, the two the two guys want it there's no doubt about that now at one stage I didn't think AJ fancied it but that doesn't seem to be the case now you know certainly from what he's you know what he's been saying and his management team have been saying so it's a fight that we all want to see you know I know Tyson wants it so let's get the fight on and let's give everybody the fight they want the two fighters especially and the fans and you know it's it should be a big year for British boxing. We get that over the line. World boxing, but certainly for British boxing, two best heavyweights in the world, you know, facing each other. That's that's going to be great. It's be great for great for our sport and great great for, as I say, great for British boxing. We we all want that to happen. Has there been any talk yet with the respective broadcasters in the UK to see how they could work together potentially to show the fight? Look, I'm sure it's all going to pan out and all work out. You know, everybody knows what their commitments are and they'll deal with the commitments. It's, it, it is what it is. And, uh, and and I don't think there's any obstacles in the way from anyone, on either either side. Everyone knows what they're, what they're, where they're, con- what, what they, ha- what they're contractually bound to do. So that's what forms the basis of the negotiations. And from there, um, I'm sure it'll all, it'll all be, works out to everybody's satisfaction. Now, if uh, Joshua vacates the WBO, we would expect it to be Joyce and Usyk for that vacant belt or perhaps for an interim title. I, I don't think he will have to vacate it. I think I think the WBO will order Usyk against Joyce, against Joe for the interim title. I saw some comments earlier today, I think it was on Boxing Social, from Kevin Barry, who trains Joseph Parker. And he felt that if Parker wins his next fight against Junior Farr, he should leapfrog Joe Joyce and be matched with Usyk for the vacant belt. Is there any chance of that happening? Well, I've got no idea. First of all, he's got to win his next fight. Well, yeah. Joe, Joe, you know, Joe, Joe beat the guy who was number two in Daniel. So he took that position. He's in there. And I don't see, well, you know, why should he leapfrog him? And you know what? He's at, you know, He's Parker's had, you know, he's a, he's a, he's had how many chances now? He's fought how many times for the title? You know, let, let's let the new guy, let's let the the two guys, the two undefeated guys, get it on. And um, talking of Joe Joyce, he had that big win over Daniel, picked up a, a load of titles. He already had some that he brought into the fight as well. Has there been any talk of him relinquishing the British title potentially, so another of your guys, Nathan Gorman, could fight for it? Not at the moment. No, we haven't had any conversations regarding that. I think, you know, there's been, I mean, you know, David Hay was banging on and I had com- or we had conversations with him because I was quite interested in it with uh, Joe fighting Chisora. Hmm. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of options there for, for Joe at the end of the day. But the yeah, interim title fight against Lucy, if it's ordered, then it's, I don't think that's going to be uh, something anyone's going to resist. 
But it leaves guys like Gorman and David Adelaide as well, who's rising up fast, kind of waiting their turn, doesn't it, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, that is too early for David to be fighting for a British title. You know, he's, he, what's he used that? Four or five fights now? I'm not sure what he's had. But, you know, we'll keep him busy this year and he would consolidate his position and hopefully by the end of the year be in a position to fight for one of these titles. But I'm not. he's not being rushed. He's not going to be rushed along. He's he's done very well for himself. I mean, he's sparred with all the guys, you know, with Tyson, with uh, Joshua. He's been in with some, you know, you don't get no better than that. So he's picked up some great experience. But... Still got to do it in the ring professionally. And he's got a way to go yet. I mean, he, he's a guy who's in a hurry. And our, guy, our job is to guide him and get him into the right position. And when he's in the right position, he'll challenge for one of those titles. And and Nathan Gorman. Nathan's been there. And Nathan, I thought Nathan had a good performance last time. It came in quite heavy, but he boxed really well. Yeah. And he's out again in March. And hopefully he'll come in, I'm sure he will do, come in a bit lighter. And... He, you know, he, he, he's a good fighter. He's a good boxer. So, you know, we'll be pushing him. There's some good fights to be made for these heavyweights. I mean, I do bang on about it. You know, Britain's where it's at as far as the heavyweights are concerned. You know, these youngsters coming through and so forth, and it's not the end of the world if someone loses a fight. Um, we're, in, we're in pretty good shape as far as the heavyweights are concerned. You mentioned Liam Williams earlier and the Andrade uh, negotiations have been ordered. You said within about six days, otherwise it goes to purse yeah. bids. Is it a relief that he seems to be finally coming to a conclusion to the saga as he's waited for his shot? Well, it is for him. I mean, and for us. I mean, we've been banging on about it for a long time. We tried various things and it just didn't happen. But, you know, he needs to move forward now. You know, Liam, he, he, what's his name? The guy who's number one. And done him in style when we brought him over. Yeah, it was a very good performance. Probably, I've got to tell you, it's probably one of the standout performances. Excellent performance that he did over a year ago. And, uh, He's done well since. I mean, he's done extremely well and he's very comfortable at that weight. He struck up a great rapport with uh, uh, with Dominic, Dominic Engel, and he's ready to go. He's very comfortable at that weight and I fancy him against Andrade. You know, I really do fancy he's got a tremendous, tremendous chance uh, at this weight to beat Andrade. I fancy Liam. He's got the bit between his teeth and he's... He's looking better in every fight. He's been very, certainly since he's gone up, he's looked much, much better fighter. And what about the uh, Edwards brothers, Charlie, obviously former world champion, Sonny undefeated, right up there in the world rankings. What what can we see for them in the early well, part of this year? We want to get we want to get Charlie in a world title fight. We're working on that. And obviously Sonny, the same thing. And uh, they're, they're, they're two guys, you know, who again want to get back in, want to be in the mix. And uh, hopefully... We'll get something sorted out for them and announce very soon. And before I let you go, just give us, say, three things you'd like to achieve in 2021 for the business. Well, the, 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 obviously the most important to, you know, let's get the, who is going to be the unified world champion. I believe it's going to be Tyson Fury. That'd be, that's number one. Uh, and just to deliver some great, great fights and get all these youngsters that we've got, you know, like young Dennis McCann, Abs of Shiraz, Willie Hutchinson, who's a stand-up fighter, amongst many others, get them into a position where they, they're going to be up and up and in the ratings looking to take the take themselves to the next level by the end of the year. That's what we want to do. They, 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 we've got some cracking young talent and we want to just bring them through, develop them. I'd like to see the, the uh, you know, uh, Arthur and Yard. I'd like to see that rematch. I'd like to get that on. Um, and all these other fights that we discussed, get them away and leading into bigger fights and hopefully we can we can do that. Great stuff. Well, Frank, it's been a pleasure even more so now. I know what you've been through and you, you've come back fighting as we would expect. Um, and hopefully no more of that sort of thing for the rest of the year. Well, touch wood, mate. I hope that's the case because uh, as I say, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a very nice thing to get and... As I say, you know, um, everybody's got to really focus and and believe what's going what's what's going on in the world at the moment because it's 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 a very dangerous place and the only people who can make it safer are the general public and they got to take notice of, as to what the government are saying at the moment because, and the scientists because it's the only way we're going to defeat this whilst they vaccinate everybody because until everyone gets vaccinated we're all 
we're all susceptible to catch it. Well, on that sombre note, I'll leave you to get on with your day. And um, yeah, great to see you back on form. And good to see you, Dan. Happy New Year to you and your viewers. And uh, look, for, uh, look forward to speaking to you in the next week or so. Brilliant. Cheers, Frank. Take care. Yeah, mate. You look after yourself. Bye, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, mate.